Good evening. Taking a live look from our tower cam tonight. It's been a snowy day here in Seattle. Snow came down for several hours and we are expecting more snow throughout the weekend. Traffic earlier in the afternoon was an absolute mess, but look, it is clearing out as the snow has stopped falling in many places. Tough going though still on those arterials. The Northwest is in the middle of a winter storm that is expected to drop up to eight inches of snow in central Puget Sound. Governor Jay Inslee has declared a state of emergency and is asking people to stay off the roads if possible. So the snow jammed up the commute, forcing schools to let out early today. It's expected to create hazardous driving well into the weekend. Everything started pretty heavily at about 1230 today, as you can see from our waterfront tower cam. Big, heavy flakes swirling around, temps on the way down. Seattle's Mayor Jenny Durkin says the city is ready and responding. Citywide, we've pre-positioned vehicles, supplies, and people, north and south. We've opened our severe weather shelters so we can get more people coming inside. We have information that have been provided to all the police and fire to make sure that if they see someone who is outside, they know where they can get them warm. In the case of power outages, City Light will open. We will be opening warming shelters for people if they lose their power. We will stay tuned on that. The city and its partners are working 24-7 to limit the impact, but we really need the public to step up again. And I want to say once again, during the closure of the viaduct, the public really did what they needed to do to make that experience better for everyone. And people will stay safe if they act safe. If you do not need to go anywhere, please don't drive. Do not get in a car and drive. If you can, please stay home. Eric Wilkinson and Drew Mickelson are both covering this snow event. Let's go to Eric live in Everett where the snow is still coming down. Yeah, the North Sound was hit hardest today. It was hit first. Uh, the folks up in Squim really got pounded. They got about a foot of snow here in the Everett area, Snohomish County, not nearly as bad. It's been a pretty much a wide open freeway commute all day long today. Folks heeding the warnings, they have uh, headed home early or not going to work at all today. Right now, some of these folks heading home, picking up some supplies for the weekend, or at least they're trying to. The day got off to a rough start for folks on the roads around Stanwood. Lloyd Marker's day went sideways fast as he was trying to beat the storm and he ended up in the ditch. Not a great day. No. I was trying to get groceries and get back home before this got too, you know, hairy out here, but then here we are. Those that did make it to the market had a tough time as well. Store shelves were empty of many of the essentials. <laughs> Jeff Roquet got the last quart of 1%. I've never seen the shelves like this. Never, ever, ever. So I'm glad we came out now. The cupboards were bare of bottled water. Meat and bread stocks were severely depleted, forcing some shoppers like Kelsey Belgum out of her comfort zone. Well, it's pretty, pretty, pretty bleak. I've been forced to have fit milk. <laughs> There's some goat milk over there, but I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> Making do with what you have will be topping the list for a lot of us as we wait for this series of storms to pass. Looks like we're going to have frozen pizza for dinner. <laughs> as long as the power doesn't go out. Exactly, exactly. And we talked with a spokesman from QFC today who wanted us to assure all shoppers out there that those uh, shelves will be restocked just as quickly as possible. In fact, we're hearing that some of them have already been restocked. And all of this talk of food is making me hungry as I, of course, have I'm working through dinner tonight, as is everybody at King Five, including my good friend down in the South Sound, Drew Mickelson. Drew, how are you feeling right now? Oh, you know, we're not too bad. It's uh, it's hovering right around 32, 33 degrees. The snow has let up a little bit, which is nice. We're up on Tumwater Hill and everyone up here is having a great time because they're not driving. They're actually playing in the snow. We're seeing some dog tricks here. That's Moxie. Nice. Could you do one one more for us? Moxie is from North Carolina. Oh, one more. You can't you can't end on a miss. One more for us for Moxie and we'll bring Callie in here as well. This is the kind of stuff we're seeing out here. Kids are playing in the snow. Everybody got out of school early. People left work early. Hi, this is Callie. Hi, Callie. Hi, Callie. What do you think of this snow? I love it. <laughs> you said you're from North Carolina. Yes. Have you seen your share of snow? Today, yes. Yep. 
Does it snow like this in North Carolina? It does. Okay. Yep. Did you know that it could snow here? We haven't had snow like this in a while. Not really. They told me when we moved out here that it doesn't snow like this. So this is a surprise. The dogs are happy though. Yes, okay, for sure. Good. All right. Thanks, Callie. <laughs> As we said, uh, everyone who's here now is glad they're here. They don't have to drive up what is a pretty steep hill. We've seen some folks leaving their cars at the base of the hill. Uh, the, the one uh, consensus here is that everyone's glad it's Friday night. They don't have to worry about going to school or going to work tomorrow. So uh, we may see a lot of this happening up here uh, for the rest of the weekend. And who knows, maybe into next week. We'll send it back to you live from Tumwater. To see it, Drew, people playing in the snow, having a good time now that it is officially the weekend. This is the view from our waterfront camera. As you can see, some snow filled skies, but the snow isn't coming down very quickly right now. Joy. Yeah, not too heavy around Seattle. Other locations are still getting hit pretty good with some snowfall earlier today. I mean, we talked about the bullseye spots. Uh, the north end of the Olympic Peninsula got absolutely hammered with a squim picking up more than a foot of snow Port Angeles as well, but we are seeing a good amount in parts of Renton, at least two miles north of Easton Renton. One of the surface sites there picked up eight inches a uh, viewer Bellevue picking up three and a half sea tech at three. Of course, more of that snow is spreading across Puget Sound, so it's not widespread in uh, in every single location, but we definitely still have a lot of it around Seattle to the north and Everett, and we also have some dry sinking air taking place right now. So just off the Olympic Peninsula, this uh, this this air is almost taking away the snowfall totals for the downtown Seattle area, but we've got more snow for Tacoma. Of course, like I said, further to the north, Olympia seeing some flakes as you just saw in uh, the live interview and the, the real unique thing here is we're also seeing temperatures flip flop between that freezing mark at 32 and just bumping up to 33. So even though we're seeing snow in Tacoma, we do have a little bit of rainfall further south. Here's Port Angeles. You guys are still seeing some uh, some snowflakes. And Anacortes was another spot that got hit pretty hard. But further towards the south is where we have the rain coming in off of the Pacific. And it takes some time for it to tap into some of that cold interior British Columbia air that's eventually moving its way along the I-5 corridor. So uh, we've got that rain transitioning to snow. And of course, from there is where I want to toss it over to meteorologist Craig Herrera because uh, these temperatures are something mm. that we've got to keep an eye on tonight. Yeah, big story. And uh, do they get below freezing or not? And a lot of spots I think are, you mentioned are going to be close to freezing. Some spots will be below that as we look at the SeaTac numbers for the next 12 hours, uh, hovering about 33, so one degree above the freezing point, and then maybe inching down to about 30 during the early morning hours. And of course, the early morning hours is when some of this will freeze over on some of those side roads. Thankfully, uh, Washtop was out getting a lot of the main roads, as you heard, and a lot of people went home early uh, to enjoy the weekend and not have to deal with some of those side roads. Six o'clock this evening, you mentioned some of those uh, bands coming on through. Uh, notice along the coast, you still have a little bit of rain, but finally the snow starting to get closer to the coast, and that's going to be 9 p.m. So this looks widespread, but this uh, some of the heavier snow from Tacoma to Olympia uh, during the overnight hours and then one o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll start to see a lot of this energy really kind of fizz out as we go into early tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow you've got some time to enjoy maybe the sleds, the kids build some snowmen, uh, take care of the sidewalks, of course. And then as we look ahead into Sunday, 12 p.m., perhaps another storm. Yesterday, if you were with us, we were talking about, we showed you two different models. One kept us completely dry, one kept us with more snow. It looks like they're both coming into agreement. So here we go. So this is 12 o'clock Sunday afternoon, and then by the evening hours, maybe some more snow moving on in. So prepare for some more snow Sunday into Monday as this system moves in. Now it does have a little more warm air with it, so you are going to see a lot of rain off the coast. And then by the time it gets closer to us, picks up some of the cooler air. Of course, we'll have to talk about totals later on. But for now, get through tonight and into tomorrow. We'll have some slick side roads. We'll send it back to you two at the desk. We've got some, uh, you know, some more snow overnight tonight. Okay, thanks, Craig. We're going to check over with uh, Stephen Kilbreth right now, who's been watching traffic that has gone from really bad to yes. not so bad, really. Well, and I think it's just the volume of people that are out on the roadways, Lori. At uh, 12, 1, 2, and 3 o'clock this afternoon, it was just a nightmare out on the roadways. We had red and black on all of the screens, and uh, now it's just some road closures that we're following for you. Highway 18 remains closed right here between uh, Snoqualmie Ridge and Issaquah Hobart Road. They did end up clearing all of the traffic out there. They should hopefully get 
get that roadway reopened soon, but we keep taking a look at it and no, it is uh, still closed both directions there right at the Tiger Mountain Summit. In some other spots of traffic, we wanted to show you there was an accident on westbound I-90 at Preston right over here and you can see uh, that the westbound traffic is backed up to nearly Highway 18. This is one of the worst areas we're seeing because of the weather from Issaquah out past North Bend and in Snoqualmie and places like that. Also on Highway 202, this is Snoqualmie Falls right here. This is that fish hatchery if you uh, ever are out in that area in Falls City. So between there, an accident still blocks the roadway. So something to watch out for if you're going to be in that area. I-90 is going to be a mess in both directions. Of course, as you head up towards Snoqualmie Pass, it really starts to get bad after North Bend as you're heading up the pass. Glenn Farley's in Storm King. We'll talk to him in just a few seconds here. But I want to show you other areas where we are still seeing some slowing and things have improved a little bit too. Also an accident in Olympia, northbound 101 near uh, Mottman Road. And there is a problem on Highway 518 after we tell you that one about uh, in Duval. But I wanted to show you this Highway 518, an accident right at 51st. This is for folks leaving SeaTac as they head over to South Center, an accident that occurred a few minutes ago. And you can see a pretty big uh, response there and a pretty big deal, but not much traffic on the roadway to deal with it. And as I mentioned, in Storm King this evening is Glenn and he is taking a look at our I-90 drive. Yeah, well, it, it's, it is, um, uh, we are in North Bend right now and what a difference a degree makes. Let's go outside to our nose cam here in Storm King. We are in downtown North Bend where it is 31 degrees. We've seen a temperature here as we were driving into town as low as 29. But remember a lot of places we were driving right at that 32. Uh, we don't have a thermometer that gives us portions of a degree, uh, but we saw 32 with bare and wet, and we saw 32. We're really starting to see things. We're turning around and heading back toward I-90. I want to go to some pictures we took when this all started in Seattle. Look at this. It was like throwing a switch. There was snow everywhere, and everybody said, let's go home now, and they did. And this is about 12 30. The snow started to hit at about 12.20 in Seattle. And of course, it hit different times in different places. But for people trying to get home, even on the bus, it could be very frustrating. Waiting for the bus, like the 510, 512. I understand that they're trying to keep people safe. My mom's a bus ride driver, so I understand they're trying to keep people safe, keep people off the roads. But I think a lot more, you know, not quoting what she said, but yes, I think it should have been a lot better planned. <laughs> a lot of people are stuck. A lot of people commute really far away like I do. So a, a better plan by the city and the transit centers would have been really helpful. Uh, so you just heard him talking about the plan. Of course, Metro, uh, Sound Transit, uh, all the agencies say they did have a plan, but they were promising that things could be challenging, and they certainly were. So anyway, uh, live in Storm King in uh, North Bend, been a lot of places today, seen snow, seen snow go away, in fact, on the roads. But uh, as things uh, freeze up, uh, it's going to look more like this. All right, Glenn Farley, take it easy up there. Thank you, Glenn. Well, despite the weather, the northbound off-ramp from Highway 99 to the new stretch of Dearborn and the stadiums is making big progress. This is of particular interest to those folks who come into the city from West Seattle. Washington State Department of Transportation had targeted Monday for the opening, but had been saying it could take up to an additional week because of weather. Weather could delay the opening because contractors cannot put down the stripes on wet, snowy streets.